in a top five matchup between two of the ACC's best teams. Heisman frontrunner Lamar Jackson faced his toughest challenge yet. The early start time versus the Titans was supposed to be a dress rehearsal for the brutal afternoon heat that the Panthers will face in their 1 p.m. regular season game. For the ACC's top duo in Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson, the accolades continue and with it, so does the anticipation for Saturday's Heisman ceremony. He is the most decorated Olympian of all time and Michael Phelps closed out his incredible career in the pool in the only way he knows with another gold medal. For NC State, the disappointing feeling following last season's 16 and 17 finish has all but evaporated into a cloud of motivation. Yes, it was a rematch of last season's NFC Championship game, but in this regular season matchup versus the Cardinals, on a scale of 1 to 10, the Panthers' desire to win was an 11. The rematch certainly lived up to its expectations, but for the Panthers, it wasn't the result they were hoping to open up their season with. Well, it just went final, and it's not the result that the Tar Heels wanted. They lose in the national championship game after Villanova hits a shot with just seconds left. 77 to 74 was the final in that one. Besides the actual stands where the game is taking place, this was actually the second most popular spot here today. Fans stopping by, taking their picture in front of this logo here because everyone wanting a snapshot in their memory for this historic event. After a shootout win in Nashville on Saturday, the Canes return to their home ice with added momentum against a New Jersey squad that was still winless on the road. The Devils struck first. Second period, Travis Zajac, the feed to Mike Camilleri for his first goal of the season. Camilleri would score twice in this one in the second period, and then he would find the hat trick here in the third on the cross move. So Carolina down 3-0, but that didn't stop Andre Nestor still from staying aggressive. After seven shots on goal, off the rebound this time, this one would finally break through. Carolina, though, outmatched in the 4-1 loss. The first NFL Sunday of the season provided plenty of nail-biting excitement, no Panthers action, so we start with the rest of the NFC South. Saints and Raiders had a crazy finish in this one. Drew Brees in top form to start. Check this out. Saints at their own two, and Brees going deep to Brandon Cooks there down the left sideline. 98 yards for the score. That's the longest pass of Breeze's 16-year career. But later in the fourth quarter here, Saints up 34-27. Oakland's Derek Carr goes over the middle to Seth Roberts, who spins his way in. Raiders decide to go for two here, and Carr again finds his target. This time it's Michael Crabtree. Oakland takes the 35-34 lead. Saints had one last chance with five seconds left here. Rookie kicker Will Lutz on to attempt a 61-yard field goal, but just hooks it left. Oakland, a winner at the Superdome, 35-34. to The 241st meeting between the two schools and the first time former Tar Heel Michael Jordan witnessed it on his birthday. And we know what's at stake here in college basketball's most famous rivalry game. Dukes won 10 of the last 13. But new season, new rules as the fifth ranked Tar Heels looking to protect home court and get revenge on last year's pair of losses. Their blueprint to do so came inside the paint. 30 points there to start and 18 of them from this guy, Bryce Johnson. He was ready in this one. Later on, Marcus Page feeding him for that up and under move. But Duke found an answer from its sixth man and Luke Kennard goes left through the lane here for the bucket. Later, Kennard, the shot fake and the baseline jumper to give the Blue Devils the lead. He reeled off seven straight points. And Grayson Allen paced the other side of their attack, twisting here for the floater to tie it. UNC got on the glass, though, out-rebounding the Blue Devils 24-15 in the first half. Carolina 2-on-1 in the break. Justin Jackson the finish. But a scary moment came at the under eight mark. Matt Jones here landing awkwardly here on his left ankle would stay down for a minute. Coach K would come out to help him. He wasn't able to put any weight on that ankle. And later on, he had to be helped off the court by his teammates. He has not returned in this one. Back on the floor, though, Johnson still working. He had a double-double in the first 20 minutes alone. Carolina led by fourth the break, and they currently lead in the second half. Michael Staples seemed like just another freshman student athlete struggling to adjust to college's heightened competition. At the beginning of the season, I was running a 29 in the 8K, which is okay, but I didn't think it would be like that, you know, hard 
at first. Staples was a star cross country runner at Southview High School just months earlier. But a sudden change in his performance had nothing to do with mechanics or speed, but rather who he thought about when he ran. My dad always told me to compete hard and, you know, never give up. So that's why I dedicated my season to him. Just a month before Michael started school at Lewisburg College, his father was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. We got the phone call and uh, my brother and I just hugged and cried and uh, my dad's our rock in our family and uh, it was it was emotional. And it kind of just took a toll on me and and I've been it's been hard for me. I think everybody was even my dad was worried about uh, my brother because you know, it's, a, it's a freshman year in college. My dad didn't want this to affect him. Through pain though often comes strength and at that point Michael's attitude towards winning became a fight for his dad. He would always still tell me he's like you know I don't want you to quit no matter what happens you're not gonna quit and that's how I want to do I want to finish for him. <laughs> With his dad on his mind, Michael's perseverance paid off at just the right time. With a spot at Nationals on the line, the freshman turned out a personal best in the 8K with a time of 24 minutes and 36 seconds at Regionals. When I finished the race, I mean, I, I said it. I was like, I did this for you, Dad. You know, my dad knew that, not that this wasn't affecting him, but that maybe this was inspiring him. It was allowing my brother to be even faster, to push even harder than he ever did because he knew he was doing it for my dad. On November 6th, just eight days before nationals, Michael's father passed away. And as the family and community continue to grieve, Michael wants to honor the most important man in his life by doing what he does best. Running's not just running. I mean, it's... For me, it's like, it's my thrive. That's, to me, it's like me talking to my dad. I just want to make my dad happy and show him that, you know, hey, dad, I made it. In Parkton, in Guzzi Akeledo, ABC 11 Eyewitness News.